I took the chicken out of the oven. Started chopping the veg. He said something, but I didn't get what it was until. Don't ignore me. I felt something hit me in the back. I looked down and it was one of his boots. He went to pick the other one up. I told him not to bother. I rolled my eyes at him, which made him angry. He then come up to me, grabbed me behind the neck, pushed me face down into the food. I could feel the smell and the heat of the garlic burning in my nostrils. I stood with me back to the counter, did want him to see me crying. And then that's when I realised I still had the knife in my hand. I turned round and thrusted it out in front of me. He said, what are you going to do with that? Go on, push. That's all you've got to do, push. You see, you're pathetic. Then that's when I felt my grip on the knife getting tighter. I just stepped forward and sliced into them. He fell to the floor and there was blood. And so we just said to him, Gary, come on, get up. Gary, look, I'll make you something else. Gary, please, come on, just get up now. I'm really sorry. Where is he? Like, I do love him. How is he? I met Rose at university. That's when she chose me and Viv and we chose her. We set up home at 42 Moss Bank Drive. Thanks to Charlie. Thanks, Charlie. I used to think that growing up together meant you just happened to shoot up alongside certain people. But now I think the way you shoot up, the shape you shoot up in, is contingent on a few people shooting up alongside you. And if you had a friendship like this, Like that. And even if one of you pull out, even though you know it's by accident, what you will feel is sadder than I ever knew was possible. Me and Viv will have to continue growing up without Rose. It won't be as good.